What's up, EJ? Man, I miss having you around in Oakland, dude. But uh, anyway, I know I told you I would teach you some derby uh, for a while now. But when we're ready, I would make a video or a few videos, show you, you know, how it works. And today's that day. So we're still kind of lacking documentation on the website. It's it's coming up soon. Um, we really know we need it. But until we can um, really sit down, buckle down, and write that out uh, as a team, I'm gonna do a few little intro videos for you. So of course, there's the main website, and there's a GitHub repo. There's a lot of stuff uh, as part of the Derby project. And, uh, you know, just as a quick reminder, because I know, you know, you've played with Meteor back in the day, uh, probably made a few things here or there since then, and, um, you know, there's a lot of similarities with uh, the capabilities we're trying to, to make possible um, in Derby. So, you know, one of the biggest ones is the real-time real collaboration. You put data in your model and it will sync with um, other clients, with the server. You know, you don't have to think about how any of that works uh, until you want to. But, uh, you know, it's all in node modules. Um, use it with uh, Express or with WebSockets, that kind of thing. Um, the other big piece of it that uh, I'm going to be explaining to you in, in the next couple videos is components and view bindings. So that's letting us use an HTML templating language to decide how our data gets wired up, what it you know binds to in the DOM. You can think of a lot of the stuff that we've done with D3, where in the JavaScript we tell you know what DOM elements to create using selections. Um, in Derby, we can write all that in HTML with a few like handy uh, template functions, and um, I think I think you'll like it. Uh, finally, there's the client server stuff where this will the page will render on the server, meaning search engines and slow connections and everything. You'll you'll see uh, something come up and uh, you know that can be parsed or read um, right when you load the page. So uh, what I want to do is real quick uh, give you a couple uh, starting points, things that we can uh, you know you can play with yourself and that, that I can go over. Uh, we'll go just take a quick look at um, a set of tutorials. Uh, I'll send you the link that uh, is, is pretty comprehensive for, for the new version of Derby. So uh, everything I'm going to talk about is Derby 0.6, which um, because it just came out this summer, um, is uh, powering the, the app we're building at Lever. Uh, we think it's production ready, I and mean, it is production ready. Uh, and we think it's working fine. Um, so there isn't that much out there on, on how to use the new stuff. There's you know there's a good bit on 0.5, but some things have changed mostly for the better really. Um, and this tutorial does a good job of introducing that. Um, one thing that you should really be aware about that's really convenient for, for quite a while is this Derby Starter project. It's a, a node module, and I'll show you um, how it hooks up. It's really easy, like one line of code. That basically gives you a server that you could think of like an express server that does all kinds of stuff that it sets up the um, the model for you, the racer stuff, you know, all the, the real-time communication and um, all you have to do is think about kind of your app code uh, when you're using this and later on when you want more advanced like deployments, you want to set up multiple servers, you want to do all kinds of stuff, you can look at you know the inside of Derby Starter which is not that much code. Um, to see what it does for you and, and you customize it. What I want to do real quick is go over a couple of Derby examples. Um, I think this repo is a great place to poke around and play around and, and it definitely demonstrates a lot of what you can do with Derby. So I think it'd be good for me to walk through you know, some of that and um, I'll, I'll do that coming up. And I think that will give a good overview. Another thing that's important to be aware of is Derby standalone. So this is kind of the client side, the view templating stuff only. Um, so you can include this um, from another project, uh, you know, something that doesn't use any any Derby that you know either doesn't have a server at all, like GitHub uh, pages, or you know, and something that you're already powering in your own ecosystem. And you just want to use some of the Derby templating stuff because some nice components are available. Um, you, know, you can totally do that with this. I think it's also a great way to 
demonstrate um, just that part, you know, like we'll, we'll do some videos where I just only use a standalone, so you don't even think about real time at all, any of the service stuff, you just, you know, can focus on the, the templating. And I think that, you know, it's something that's really useful. People are really digging stuff like Angular and Ember and stuff to organize their client site code, help make modular things that can communicate with each other. And I think Derby does a really uh, good job of that, it has a really interesting take on the syntax. I think it's much cleaner, much nicer, and easier. Uh, so yeah, we'll go over that. All right, well, that's what we're gonna cover in this uh, first set. So check out the next video. Derby examples will be digging in. All right, too. Catch you then.